I'm Maurice, Karen's son. Um, four years ago, I was diagnosed with a tumor on my spine. Um, my diabetes was so out of control and uncontrolled that they would not do the surgery. I, I was heavier then. I, they wanted me to lose weight, quit smoking cigarettes, quit drinking Mountain Dew, and get my blood sugar down. Those were the stipulations. Uh, I wasn't successful for, four, <laughs> for three and a half years. Um, I had met a woman, Elizabeth. Um, we became best friends and she helped me through a lot because I was in a tremendous amount of pain because of this tumor. Uh, we lost touch for a while. I met a lady named Valerie Brothers and uh, I met her in January of 17. We became close very quick and we got married on her birthday October 2nd of 2018, yes. Uh, the following month, November 15th, she got diagnosed with uh, gallbladder cancer and she was in the end stage. Uh, fast forward a little bit, I, uh, I lost her that next February. And I'll be honest with you, I was, I was angry at God. I've never, I don't, I don't pray, I never have. I haven't been in church since 93. And, uh, you know, I asked him to take me instead, let her live. She had been abused, she'd been married for 27 years. She was abused those entire 27 years. And uh, after we were married, she had told me that she never knew what love was until she met me. And she was happy. Happier than she ever been. So I lost her in February, and uh, I was I was I was lost myself. I di I didn't know how I was going to live without her. Uh, then Elizabeth came back into my life, my best friend, <coughs> and uh, she provided me that shoulder I needed. I cried, with, you know, I cried, she cried with me, I laughed, I had memories, and she helped me, and she saved me in every way a human can save another human, because I was going to crash my Hummer into a tree I didn't want to live. Um, I woke up October 17th of last year, and I was paralyzed all of a sudden, I just, I just couldn't walk. No one was there. And I couldn't afford an ambulance copay, so I dragged myself out of bed. I crawled on my belly through my house, outside, off my porch, and I, I had a Hummer. I pulled myself into a Hummer myself, and I used my cane. I drove. I used my cane to operate the gas and the brake. I got to the emergency room, and I called them. I said, I woke up paralyzed. I'm, I'm in your ER parking lot. I'm in a Hummer. I can't get out. And uh, it had quadrupled in size in a month's time. So they said, we got to get it out. There are other health concerns no longer is a concern because we forgot to get this out. So they got it out. And I was getting ready to go home. They was releasing me finally. And I'd reached the point where I told my mother, I said, I don't want to live no more. I can't handle this pain. And I'm still struggling with the death of Valerie. Um, I, uh, I was waiting for my pain pills. I was eating Percocets. I was eating 120 Percocets in less than two weeks. I was in so much pain. <coughs> and then I'd have to wait two weeks, three weeks, before I can get my refill. So I got my pills. Elizabeth had taken me to Walmart to get them. And uh, I took three of them right then and there. And there. And uh, I basically haven't taken any since. I, I called mom and I told her, I said, you know, she called, well, she actually, she called me. I said, I'm pain free, I'm not hurting. And I'm not taking my pain pills. And I said, I don't know what in the world's happened. <laughs> and then and that's when I found out about you all. But you'd been praying for me. She goes, well, I gotta tell you something. 
the, and she knew my positional church. I told my mother, I said, don't you ever invite me again, I'll go when I'm ready to go. I'll let you know. And that's when I started hearing about you guys. And she says, they've been praying for you. And she goes, that's why you're not hurting. <laughs> and I said, when I can walk, I want to come and visit you guys. Amen. January 1st, my life took a drastic change this year. I started having these horrible dreams. Um, I'm not going to go in, in depth to what they were because there's children in here, but you're welcome to ask me, Pastor Wayne or Pastor Mike, they know. Travis knows. But uh, I started having these horrible dreams where my soul was in danger. And uh, all of a sudden, it changed for me where at night, when it turned night, and I don't mean this as a memory, I mean, I mean this literally. I remember every nuance, smell, everything that happened that, that, that night, night. But I, I started reliving my wife's death. And I couldn't get rid of it. It, just, it. My brain was hostage to that memory. And I would relive it over and over and over. And it was, it's as painful now as it was then. And um, I finally got, and I haven't slept. I wasn't sleeping. If I got two hours sleep a week, I was doing great. And my, my mom was concerned, my brother, his, his wife was concerned. Everybody was concerned about it. Beth was, because I was, I was a walking zombie, but I couldn't sleep. And uh, I talked to my mother the other night, it was February 5th, and I told her, I said, well, I can't do this no more, I can't, I can't relive her death anymore, it's killing me inside. And I said, I, I no longer want to live. And she said, you need to call Pastor Mike. And I'm like, it's 11.30 at night. I don't want to wake him up. She goes, call him. I called him and I didn't get an answer. I assume he was asleep. So I called mom back and she said, so, she said, you call Pastor Wayne. Call him. So I called him. <coughs> and he answered. And I told him, I said, I need help. Because I can't do this no more. I'm going, I'm going insane. I... I and I, I told him what was going on. And he says, all you got to do is ask the Lord to help you surrender yourself to the Lord. And, and I said, I don't know how to do that. And he says, just speak. Speak, your, speak from your heart. That's all you got to do. There is no script. We talked almost two hours. And he had told me he's normally not up at that time. His phone is usually shut off. And he said, for some reason. You know. So, to make a long story short, I, I, I did surrender myself to the Lord that night. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And he told me, he says, you know, all you got to do is ask for help, and everything will be, you'll be fine. And he goes, I know you will sleep tonight. I know that you're not going to have those memories. It's not going to concern you anymore. I found out because of my sister-in-law what that trigger was, because it was the night when my wife died, so 21 p.m. February 27th. Passed away made me realize the devil, you know, I had mentioned going to church. And um, he said, the devil takes your biggest weakness and attacks you with it. Right. And that's what he was doing to me. Mm -hmm. So I finally I got a phone with Pastor Wayne, and I fell asleep in less than 10 minutes, Thank and you, I Jesus. slept Thank all you. night Thank until mid-morning. And I had no, I did not relive my wife's death, and I haven't relived it since. And I'm sleeping. I've got more sleep this week than I have in the last uh, four months. I came here for the first time and I, I felt at home instantly because everybody knew me and I didn't know it. 
<laughs> uh, oh, you're Maurice. Uh, I guess the, uh, the toddler walking into leg braces and a cane gave that away. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm very thankful for everybody here for praying for me. You bet. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Glory to Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Can you get the Holy Spirit? And I'm thankful for this church. And Pastor Wade told me I was family now. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We love you, Maurice. And I love all of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.